Hi, I'm John, the banking systems engineer at Termel, and in January 2004, I wrote to the United Nations Secretary General Kofi Annan demanding the opportunity to address the United Nations on installing a time-based currency to restructure the global financial architecture as demanded in Resolution C6 to the governments in the Millennium Declaration, which I gave the speech on a worldwide interest-free Unilets time-based currency. Well, the idea to ask for and a chance to address the United Nations came from the book Proteus by Morris West. And this is a report on the book that gave me the idea for my opportunity to address the UN again. Weird inspirations pop up at any old time. Proteus by Morris West. I picked this up in a secondhand store, this novel by Morris West, ISBN 0553 6 published in 1979. Funny, that was the year I started my Abolish Interest Rates project in the same year that Proteus was published. Why didn't I read this 25 years ago? So, it's a spellbinding novel about John Spada, a Bill Gates-style billionaire whose daughter marries a crusading news reporter living in a third world dictatorship where Spada has investments. She and her husband are eventually arrested by the police. She's raped and tortured before they find out who she is. And El Presidente eventually releases her but claims they don't have her husband. Well, Spada busts him out of prison. And in retaliation, the bad guys try to blow him up and blow up his wife, daughter, and son-in-law instead. So he goes off the deep end. All in all, really bad week. Pretty good reason to be upset. So he prepares to unleash a biological agent on the whole world, proclaiming, Open your jails, let the prisoners out into the light, or I, John Spada, who have nothing now to lose, will turn your cities one by one into cemeteries. Of course, he's emptying the jails, but forgetting to change the laws that keep putting them in there in the first place. Going after the symptom, not the cause. Page 312. One week before the United Nations General Assembly has scheduled to meet, a package was delivered to the mail room, demanding to speak to the General Assembly. And he demanded his list of prisoners be set free. I beg you, as you will see, my proposition contains nothing to which you and your colleagues do not subscribe. No demand which the United Nations Organization has not made, over and over again, the liberation of prisoners of conscience, the abolition of torture, the restoration of the right of free speech, free assembly, fair trial, the right to enjoy life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That you have made these demands is a matter of history. That you have been unable to enforce them is a matter of universal regret. However, now that they are enforceable because of my threat, I send you lists of prisoners, again, incomplete because secrecy is the weapon of all tyrants. I request and require that these places of detention be opened, their inmates released, and dispersed to their homes within 21 days of this date, and that the release be the dispersal be supervised and confirmed by observers from the international agencies appointed by the UN. Well, again, he doesn't address the reason that the General El Presidente is putting him in jail in the first place. I further request and require that this demand be made known at the first meeting of the United Nations General Assembly and that the Assembly invite me on the next day to plead it before its members. Gee, getting an invite to address the Assembly is as easy as that? But who has an issue as big or the ego as big to dare? If and when the prisoners are released, I undertake that all supplies of the cultures of the toxin in the hands of the Proteus organization will be destroyed forthwith. So, you're sincerely Proteus. So the general asks, Secretary General asks, can you sum up, please? Well, it is clear that Proteus is aware of how the United Nations organization functions. He writes formally to the Secretary General, who is obliged to bring the matter to the attention of the General Assembly which alone can consent to his appearance in this place, as it did to the appearance of Yasser Arafat. So Yasser Arafat's appearance is the precedent for John Spada's quest to save the world from those sad symptoms uh, of the as-yet-unknown cause of oppression. So, page 17, they will respond by strict adherence to protocol. 
the Secretary General will refer the matter to the heads of the delegations of the to the General Assembly. They will advise their respective governments and state instructions. Page 327, the first disclosure was made, according to protocol, by the Secretary General to the Plenary Conference of Correspondents accredited to the United Nations. Each correspondent received a copy of the letter of demand, the schedule of camps and inmates, a photograph of the vials containing the legal, legal materials. And the Secretary General deposed briefly, faced with this threat. All delegates to the United Nations have been instructed by their governments to vote in the General Assembly, which will commence at 10 tomorrow morning. The purpose of this section, session is to hear the views of all member nations to determine by vote whether the person who calls himself Proteus shall be admitted to address the Assembly or whether we shall refuse to receive him with all the consequences that may entail. So, at three in the afternoon, by a narrow majority, the General Assembly voted that in the hope of a speedy removal of the monstrous threat to humanity, we agreed to invite the person called Proteus, under guarantees of immunity, to address the members of this assembly in an extraordinary session and permit full news coverage of the occasion by the media in the great chamber of the assembly. I sat in that chamber twice with my white hard hat on. So... He now gets his chance to speak, and he tells them, It is true that you are here under duress, but you are here in comfort in your own place, free to come and go at will, to debate openly, to eat well, to demand immunities in your persons and your houses. There are others, tens of thousands of others, in prisons, in detention camps, in torture rooms, in psychiatric institutions, who are not free, whose simplest human rights have been abrogated. It is for them that I come to speak. It is for them that I have temporarily and very mildly abridged your very great freedom. I claim that I have a mandate from the silent to speak for them, from the imprisoned to plead for them, from the tortured to proclaim their wrongs, from the dead to write a decent epitaph. So he has a mandate to tackle the symptoms of the unknown cause. He read a catalog, country by country, figure by figure, detail by detail, until he had cowed them again into silence. His voice was a thunder rolling through the domed chamber. After the thunder came a silence, and after the silence came a passionate plea. Look, listen, take heed, I beg you. These are your brothers and sisters. Their blood is your blood, crying not for vengeance, but for an end of this long iniquity. What are you, savages dancing around the fire, chanting while your victims burn? medieval inquisitors wrenching irrelevances from dying men. If you are, then the terror which I hold over you is less than you deserve. So if you are not, then in the name of whatever gods you worship, make an end of this monstrosity. Remember, time runs out. He stood for one silent moment, dominating them, waiting for the question they dared not ask. And Ida said, hey, what would you have us do to stop more oppression while we empty your jails? Then he walked out of the chamber. So then the book goes on to what happens after that. So I can only say that if I ever pulled a Proteus move, I'd know about the root cause before claiming any mandate. Proteus demands a remedy that really changes nothing for long. I demand an end to the machine that creates poverty, which is the raison d'etre of a military police establishment to keep the debt slaves down. Maybe I should make a Proteus demand. Not Proteus versus the symptoms of oppression, but Proteus versus the cause. So, uh, during the millennium year, I sent emails about Unilets to every politician and government with an email address on the whole planet. 14,000 of them. Dear Sir, the Unilets engineer is trying to get back to the UN after three years. Har har. What's with Let's in 54 countries around the world with online connections? What with 90% of the world's politicians knowing what I'm about? What with the international Let's conference going on in Montreal next week, from whence all the little fishes could go back to their nations and push for Unilets from the bottom up, while I push their politicians' emails from the top down? Is it too serendipitous to expect success? So why bother trying? It might be time to raise Unilets at the United Nations once again. No one helped the last time when getting on the Millennium Declaration seemed such a quixotic venture. Maybe some will help now that getting on the Millennium Declaration makes it less so. So, what else do I possibly need? 
Here's a way to try and get a chance to address the United Nations on the time standard of money and why Resolution C6 of the Millennium Declaration hasn't been upheld, enforced, engineered yet. So I'm John, the banking system's engineer, Termel, and uh, the Proteus versus the cause, and that'll be my next post.